uh, done in the collaboration with the Institute of Physics and Materials from the Czech uh, Academy of Sciences in Brno. Uh, the Institute is in Brno. Yeah. So the topic is the side uh, groove effect on fracture mechanical fatigue testing of PLA material. So this PLA material is usually <coughs> used in the FDM technology. This is an extrusion based technology also. This, uh, so this is the technology where you melt the material and then you extrude it onto a build platform. Here are some photos of uh, how the specimens uh, were printed, how the printing was done in Belgrade. Next, uh, just to point out a few features in the slicer software, so where we prepare our specimens, is that all of the FDM specimens have top and bottom layers, which are different from the impulse structure, which has uh, different um, patterns or info percentages. And uh, around this impulse structure, you have the outlines. We use the honeycomb infill uh, structure, and all, all of our specimens are of full density, so 100%. But still, the slicer software makes this uh, sort of a hole, so we use this uh, honeycomb structure, and it was printed like in zigzag motion, like this on zero degree, 60 and minus 60, just to show this, and you'll see. So uh, we wanted to fatigue test some uh, CT specimens, and we did some uh, side, group, side group ones. So the dimension of the CT specimen was 62 by 60 by 10. Uh, the side row ones were a bit thicker, so uh, they're similar but with 13 millimeter thickness. All were prepared according to standard. And um, with one difference, because the A over W ratio is 0 0.35, just to allow longer crack lengths. And the side group specimens, they were placed on the sides of the notch, and their diameter was 3 millimeters. And uh, we did the tests on uh, CT specimens with different thicknesses. Uh, the, the tests were conducted on uh, Institute of Physics of Materials in Brno. Uh, they were fatigue tested on, on room temperature with a testing frequency of 10 Hz, which is from literature okay for, for plastic materials, and cycle asymmetry was 0.1, so we used to set uh, of 2D cameras to capture the, the crack length. Uh, then first we did uh, tests on specimens with the highest thickness we, we had. So uh, we started with 0.3 millimeter. Some of the 2D printers operate with this kind of uh, a thickness. So a uh, pre-crack was created using a metallographic sawmill with a 0.4 millimeter uh, thick blade. Uh, for the precision measurement, um, the pre-crack was um, measured using a microscope with a measuring table. So uh, that's uh, about the, the pre-crack. And uh, the surface of the, of the specimens were uh, ground on a metallographic grinder just to make them smoother and to have uh, a, better, a better surface for capturing the, the crack propagation. So the we saw that it was enough to see the, the, the delta A. Then, uh, according to some uh, optical microscopies, uh, here on this 0 0.3 millimeter, we see some three different uh, structures in, on this uh, one area. Uh, we see near homogeneous uh, structure in the outer surface, but in the inside we see some um, uh, through, hole, uh, through thickness uh, holes, which go from the one uh, side to the other. They're quite big and they'll influence uh, the results up sh shortly. And uh, in the third section, we had the smooth surface of the of the free crack. So on this 0.3, we see that uh, there is quite an inconsistency. There, there should be quite an inconsistency in the results, so in the outer surface, we see that the, the crack was propagating in like 45 degree angle, but the inside propagated uh, on a 30 degree, probably because uh, in the outer surface, outer surfaces were printed with a 45 degree direction, and uh, the internal structure was uh, with a honeycomb structure, so that's where the 30 degree is. So we followed the 
the, one of the limits of the interpretation of the results is that we follow the crack propagation on the surface, not inside. Uh, and also on this 0.3 CTs, we see in some places the crack propagation in multiple uh, directions. So this was also one problem. So we developed side groups on this uh, CT specimens on the sides from the from the <coughs> notch till the end of the specimen. So they proved their function. Uh, really, the the crack was propagating through like straight. But the real problem here is that the, the crack, uh, prop <coughs> uh, crack started to propagate from a pre-notch and continued right next to the outer layers of this uh, side groove. This, you see it here. And these are the red lines, the, the, the beginning of these of this layers. So what developed is that crack started uh, in here in the middle and went up straight here and somehow it, it hides uh, behind this printed layers of the pre-notch so at some steps we couldn't see the, the, uh, the, develop, the developed crack so that's why the side groups proved to be I mean this geometry of side groups proved to be uh, quite bad just few results were obtained with this and um, like uh, this layer structure of the, of the side groups you can see on the, on the optical microscopy images and you see that uh, from the uh, front side of the specimens you see that um, uh, the internal structure behaved differently from the, from the front surface and of course due to all these problems because of this uh, quite uh, thick holes inside of the specimen uh, the problem with the inconsistency of crack growth, there was quite high um, scatter of data and with the linear fit we had only 0.32 uh, R square value. The next step we did, so you see also on the uh, crack growth kinetic chart that there is quite high scatter of, uh, of data. The next step was to create some finer specimens. So we start, uh, we then uh, started to, to test uh, 0 0.1 millimeter uh, thick specimens. So in this fine printed specimens, um, crack didn't have a strong ten tendency to grow in 30 degree direction of 45. It developed straight line from the pr from the initiation up to uh, a uh, total uh, failure. So the difference between crack in different layers is not that large, which we can see on the image to the left. Like I've shown you before, there was different angulation between the layers here. It's not that clearly visible. And um, uh, in 0 0.1 specimens here on the, on the fracture surface, we see that these through thickness holes are quite smaller. And uh, with crack growth in these specimens, there were only one primer crack developed. So we didn't have any issues uh, as we had it with uh, specimens with higher thickness. Yeah. Uh, then on the final fracture surface, we see uh, the lighter region where we see the representation of brittle fracture. So the final fracture is here. And here is the, the image of um, uh, crack propagation. It's, dark, it's in darker area, uh, showing that there was some uh, ductile, um, ductile deformation. And uh, with 0 0.1 uh, specimens, we see quite, uh, quite an improvement in, in, uh, in data consistency. So here, the R-square value is close to 0 0.6, but still insufficient, really. Here are the uh, crack growth kinetic chart of this one. So comparing to uh, both 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, where we see that the, the points for 0 0.3 are on the far sides, uh, the 0 0.1 uh, has a greater improvement in the results, so there is uh, less scatter of uh, data. So just to conclude, and I think we'll finish uh, in, in, 
in a minute or two. So we did test some CT specimens with uh, 10 hertz frequency on room temperature with R ratio of 0.1. We first started with 0.3 millimeter uh, thick layer uh, CT specimens. We obtained uh, high crack kinetic <coughs> scatter beta due to specimen homogeneity, as I've shown. There, is, uh, there, there are uh, wide infill holes on the fracture surface and uh, different angles of crack propagation between layers. So 30 degrees as we've seen in the infill structure and 45 in the outer layers. So the result was pretty bad to say, yeah? And um, uh, that's why the side groups <coughs> were appointed. They proved their intended function, so the crack inclined to follow um, uh, a straight line, but still the crack propagated because of the, 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 the geometry of the, of the um, uh, side groove, uh, crack started to, to go behind these printed layers and that's why it was insufficient to monitor uh, the whole crack propagation. The next was to create uh, finer CT specimens, so we reached for the highest precision uh, on our 3D printer, so 0.1 layer thickness. Here we have smaller infill poles and also we can see, I'll show the previous slide, <coughs> uh, better adhesion between layers. So in 0.3 you see how the, the layers differ between each other. You can see different <coughs> layers. But in 0 0.1, uh, there is better uh, adhesion between layers. You can't see in, in this ductile propagation, in this crack propagation area, uh, you don't see clearly the difference between some layers. So the adhesion was quite better and uh, there was better homogeneity of the, of the specimen. Uh, so uh, here in 0 0.1 uh, specimens, millimeter thick uh, layer specimens, crack propagated in straight direction and lower scatter of scatter of data was obtained. Um, so in these specimens there was no need to, to appoint uh, side groups in them. So for uh, specimens, just to point out the one of the uh, major conclusions of this uh, presentation is that if you expect uh, some irregular frag growth if you need to test some, like here, 0 0.3 millimeter thick <coughs> specimens, you'll have to appoint side groups somehow, but uh, just to stress out to use some different geometry, to try something else uh, on uh, these prepared specimens, because we've shown that because of some features on the, on the, on the, on the printed side groups, the crack just uh, hide it behind some uh, printed layers. So suggestion is to possibly machine the side groups if you can, instead of printing them because of this above layers that could influence on the crack observation. And the main issue here is the inhomogeneity of CT specimens because this was printed in the FDM technology and of course this technology has some, some issues. Just to point out that the specimens were printed with uh, 200 degrees Celsius extrusion temperature. All were printed with 100% infill. And the um, suggestion is to consider making, to improve the specimens and to create them with lower structure and persistence. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any question from the audience? Please. So you say your layers were 0.3 and then 0.1. Yes. And was two different layers distinguished from each other by what one had a type of hunting obstruction and the second one had a type of what? No, both both had the same parameters. Both are with honeycomb in, in, in build, yes. But the only <coughs> difference is in layer height. The only difference. Okay. Um, have you tried print? If you have these layers, have you tried printing the material with just you know one type of layer, a second type of layer, and lose some type of friction of this just to get an idea of what the plastic cell size would be? Because then you can estimate why you get this interaction at this position out of the old one plane like, which you have a problem with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well we have some results but it's a whole different story. Yes, but we did some uh, 
fracture coupling spasts on on the same standard STM T504 pass. Doesn't matter on on STMB uh, tax passings. Yeah, good, good suggestion. Have a question, please. Yeah, a short question. Uh, as I understood, you you suggested next time that you should machine the, the yes. side roof instead of uh, uh, print that, to print that. No. Yeah, yeah it's your first conclusion. Yes, just to mention again, so this is how in the slicer software this side groove looks like. So this is in the CAD model. Yeah. And the side groove is like this half uh, circle. Yeah. And by uh, creating the model in the slicer software, it doesn't look like a course. It has to you know, fill in this, this layers. The problem are first layers close to this last, so to this last surface. Uh, the crack from here started to develop a little underneath this layer, yes, and the improvement maybe is to uh, change the geometry of side groups, maybe V type, so or just to machine them like that. Yeah, so you suggested that, that there is a different stat state inside of your. your, <coughs> your Sorry? Yeah, a different is, is stat state inside of your side groove. Because it's not, uh, the, 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 the crack is not going straight ahead of that, but it's having a deviation. Well, yes, yes, it follows this like this yeah. red lines. Yeah. Either it goes, uh, either it follows the one or the other, or maybe it can switch. Yes, exactly. So, uh, just Any other questions? Okay, thank you again. Okay.